alternative internet infrastructure for the coming zombie apocalypse. All that and more this time on Hack 5. Brains. Rawr. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. This is your weekly dose of Technolust. I'm very excited to be wrapping up 14. <sighs> Me too. You know what? I am so ex so tired from DEF CON. It was crazy, crazy fun, but it was great. It was very eye-opening with everything that was going on Oh, right absolutely. It's always a great time at DEF CON. We love uh, that we have the opportunity to go to the DEF CONs, the Derby CONs, the Shmoo CONs, the Tor CONs, and all of those things that make this community so great. In fact, this is a very special episode as we wrap up this season because I'm actually going to be talking about, well, I'm going to be running some stuff that uh, I have had a unique opportunity in not just hacker conferences, but going to hacker spaces. Oh, yes. And you've been to so many this year. I have. I'm going to continue to do as I uh, go through Hack Across America. I, I was super ambitious with this project. I, I don't know why I thought for some reason I could go to... There are like 1,600 active hacker spaces. Seriously? Yeah, 1,600, yeah. Wow. And I was so like, you're oh, going to visit all of them, right? All of them. Yes, yeah, and I was like, I could do that in uh, six months. No. <laughs> Reality of the situation is, I'll be 130 by the time. I don't oh know God. what the number is, but um, so I will be continuing to do this. I think I'm going to take Q4 off so that I, or yeah. the last three months of the year, so that I can like enjoy cool. the holidays. Well, the holiday and all season, yeah, 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 that makes yeah. sense. Um, but uh, but then pick it back up on the East Coast because there's so many. You know, there's Hack DC. There's so many. There's stuff in Atlanta. There's stuff oh, yeah. in Florida. There's really cool stuff on the East Coast that I want to see as well. So I'm probably going to re-kick off that. But, um, but yeah, stay tuned to HackAcrossAmerica.com for the tour dates because I'm about to go through like Idaho and Montana and Col awesome. Colorado and then down through Texas. There's three back to back in Texas. <laughs> so busy. Be yeah. Maybe I'll join you on one of those trips. You should come out to Austin. Austin's Ooh. gonna be fun. Yeah, never yeah. been there. That yep. would be super cool. Uh, okay, so I should probably set this up that uh, first and foremost, uh, my apologies for the audio quality if it is uh, not, the, not what you've come to expect from Hack5 here in the studio. Uh, we make do when we go to these hacker spaces. This is a hacker sp uh, was uh, recorded at a hacker space in Los Angeles uh, after, during a Hack Five field trip where we got to go and see the Endeavor space shuttle, which oh, was yes, which was like so cool. I got goosebumps. It was so great. Um, and then give a talk at a hacker space and then go out for drinks later, and it was just so much fun. But uh, but one of the really cool things that I've felt uh, compelled to do during. Uh, Hack Across America is offer not just to come and tour these hacker spaces, which is really cool. We'll have a tour of the, the hacker space soon. Um, but uh, and, and to bring awareness to you know the community that there's really cool mm -hmm. stuff in your backyard, but also you know to talk about something some of the things that I'm very passionate in. And we've seen me talk at say Noise Bridge about right. Wi-Fi and things of that nature. And I've if you go to hackacrossamerica.com and you click on you know talks or whatever I have or speaking, I have a whole list of these talks that I'm like I'm offering to give you know th this is my contribution to the community. You know I'm not the best coder in the world, but I'm passionate about some stuff. I'd love to come to you know hacker spaces around the world and talk about this stuff. And yeah. uh, and it has been very receptive. And I must say this is actually a very difficult thing for me because uh, I at very first self censored in in such a way where I asked nobody to record. The talk, and as as these things evolve, and as the subject matter is such that, um, I and can people have been very respectful of that too. People have been, and it's it's just because of the subject matter is something I'm a little nervous about because I yeah. have a healthy fear, um, as everybody should, and also, you know, I love those men with the shiny shoes; they're really the greatest. <laughs> but um, of course. but I wanted to talk about internet infrastructure for the coming zombie apocalypse. It's an abstract that sounds great, but essentially what I'm talking about is when there's no route to host, whether it be you know a disaster like Katrina or an oppressive government. And as we've seen in, in Egypt and Syria and all, all these other you know nations with Arab Spring, and as the, the recent revelations with not just you know no route to host, but the, the monitoring with uh, you know programs throughout the UK at GCHQ or locally here with the NSA, yeah. uh, this is even more and more prev uh, important to talk about. Right. I started doing this talk at these hacker spaces before the whole you know Snowden NSA Prism stuff mm -hmm. broke. Um, and then this this particular one, uh, this talk occurred about a week after that stuff broke, so wow. it's it's very fresh. Um, and I feel like this is really just a conversation that needs to continue happening throughout the hacker community. So I'm uh, as nervous as I am. I'm very excited to kind of bring to you kind of a raw and uncut. This is what it's kind of like at these hacker spaces when I go and talk. And this is one of the uh, the talks that I give. And I just w I want to garner feedback. 
Uh, so this is one of those episodes where I, I really value whatever you want to send by, what's in your heart about this, because I'm very passionate about it. Uh, and it's something that will continue to evolve. And, um, and anyway, yeah, I set up the rest of it at the hackerspace. So when we throw to that, you'll see. But, um, <laughs> but feedback, yeah. Well, second off, I do want to say a big happy eighth birthday to us. Oh, yeah. I know I haven't been a part of the show, but for five years. Yeah. But you, you started this in 2005, and we've been going strong for a good eight years. And uh, Revision 3 was nice enough to send us some cookies, <laughs> these, these beautiful fortune cookies Yummy. with icing on them. Yes. That was very sweet of them, and I have to say thank you to Revision 3 for everything Oh, yeah, we should. Uh, we got three fortune cookies. So, Paul, you want to just leave it on main? Come over here and take a <laughs> flabongo hit? Oh wait, the, that's right. We don't have. See. Yeah, we don't have the yeah. flabongo anymore. Uh, so we have the. Um, here you gotta here, you gotta come over here. here. Yeah. So All we right. have the three longest running, what employees of Hack Five oh, now? Oh God, we're that's not employees. Crazy. No, Lloyd. contractors. So contractors. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're now my question is, that, do these have fortunes in them crazy. about our future? Well, I hope so. You know that the fortune cookie well, originated in San Francisco. Oh, that's right. It I did. I think that's the case. It's very fortunate. All right, mine says. Ed admirer is too shy to greet you, and also dongs. <laughs> Mine says, you long, <laughs> you long to see the great pyramids of Egypt. <laughs> and also dongs. <laughs> Mine says, uh, use your charm or personality to attain your wishes, and also dongs. <laughs> Nice. Awesome. <laughs> You're going to so we had this dongs. ongoing thing at DEF CON about dongs, and I don't know, just an admirer is too shy to greet you in bed. Oh, I, I like an also dong. And also dongs. It, it works a lot better that Peace way. Just be with you. <laughs> and and dongs with you. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks, Paul. Make the cameras switchy happen. Um, yes. Thank you, Paul, for continuing your excellent service to this wonderful podcast that we like to call Hack Five. It's really funny how we got Paul like social engineered into the project to begin with. We started saying like we called out like in the first three episodes, "Hey, Paul, fix the camera," and stuff like that, and uh, it was just a tripod. There was no Paul. <laughs> we kept on saying Paul's name, and I kept on telling Paul. In fact, Paul was one of the first people to find out about Hack5, and I was like, dude, we can do this podcast, it's going to be so great. And he's like, uh, yeah, sure, you got a script. <laughs> it's, um, it was. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> and so finally I kind of got Paul social again. engineered into it, too. That's what happens to everyone. What the heck, man? <laughs> Yes. No, oh. I'm doing the show five years later, and I wasn't even supposed to be doing it, you know, five years ago. You were just like, you should review this video game. And Man, I, was like, okay. I was supposed to be an extra. <laughs> anyway, um, October 5th, we're going to have the big party. Uh, right now, we're just having a little shindig. Uh, but uh, October 5th, stay tuned for details. It will be huge. It will be our eight-year and two-month anniversary. So, wow. um, yeah. Okay. We've rambled enough in the A block. <laughs> this show is about internet freedom. Let's kick it over to Crash Space and hear all of the things that I'm scared to say to the world, okay. but okay to say in front of a group of 100 people at Hackerspace. And I had previously asked, you know, don't record it. Um, prison broke. It's all being recorded anyway, so hey, you know. <laughs> um, which, by the way, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, this is the talk on the alternative internets for the coming zombie apocalypse. Uh, zombie apocalypse is easier to say than you know whatever it may be: oppressive, uh, you know, government, um, you know, economic collapse, uh, no rat to host. Um, and what this talk is about is uh, the internet, um, its enemies, and what can be done to keep it free. Basically, that's that's how I feel. I feel the internet should be free. Uh, this talk is not a bulletproof uh, solution for internet freedom. I don't believe in any such thing. Uh, it's not a comprehensive list of any such uh, alternatives, uh, networking technologies, but I do uh, feel strongly about some of the uh, projects that I will show here, and I'm constantly learning about new ones. See, the thing is, internet freedom is a conversation that is being uh, that is currently going on at so many hacker conferences that I go to. It's a, this, this is really awesome. How many of you guys knew each other before you came here? Okay, well, I hope when we all go out to get drinks, you guys all meet each other and uh, come back to this space and, uh, and participate in this because this is the weirdest thing for me because I didn't ask for any of this, but there's this weird hub-spoke model. And so when I go to these hacker conferences, you know, since everybody knows me, they're all telling me, like, oh, we're working on this alternative infrastructure. And it's like, did you know that this other guy is doing the same thing, like, but you're not talking to each other? So, you know, um, uh, so anyway, it's not a comprehensive list, but I... Uh, 
I'd like to kind of introduce that kind of stuff. I should probably introduce myself. Um, I'm that guy. I'm Darren Kitchen. I, um, I started out on one of these things doing text files for the phone freaking scene, the hacking scene. Back in the day, I was, um, you know, my back in the day was the 90s. When in the 90s, I would ride my bicycle around the neighborhood looking for Bell Atlantic vans. Bell Atlantic was before Verizon uh, and GTE and everybody else got bought up. But uh, basically, I would I'd ride around looking for Bellmen and like be like, hey man, are you working on the phones? Yeah, kid, I'm working on the phones. Cool, is that? Are you doing pair again with pulse amplitude modulation? Why don't you sit down? Like, suddenly like, what? You know, and these guys at their day was, you know, the 60s with the blue box and things of that nature. I got into it with the allure of the red box and, uh, so, and, and the free phone calls. But once the allure goes away, then suddenly it's like, how did that work? And so that's when the real fun happens. And that would, that's what led me into getting interested in networking and infrastructure. It's why the internet is so near and dear to my heart. I think it's a fantastic example of uh, you know, a, a potentially fl uh, free and open global infrastructure. And, um, and yeah, so I started writing, at the time, text files, which were traded on bulletin board systems, on, on uh, uh, FTPs, on FSERVs, on IRC. Uh, and it was really a lot of fun until I was, um, I had a nice visit from so the liner is good. Um, and then kind of put that on the shelf for quite a while. But then in 2005, I really missed the scene. I was working as a systems administrator. I had taken my passion for you know hacking and freaking and turned it into a career as systems administration. But that got really boring. Uh, I had already scripted and automated my job, pretty much. I was working from home with a bunch of batch files and uh, shell scripts. And so then I started this podcast, um, Hack5, as basically a way to introduce a lot of the things that I was so intrigued in uh, to the community uh, to kind of hopefully foster a new generation of would-be not script kiddies uh, to you know basically do the same kind of uh, tech variety stuff that I was into in the text files and um, of course nobody's gonna you know with with this new generation people don't have the attention span for that stuff and I was also really into video so let's just put it all together I've had the unique opportunity to uh, work with some of these guys uh, now revision 3 is actually with these guys so that's pretty cool and um, and yeah, I've just been you know blessed in this weird way that all this kind of like came together. Never asked. And I didn't wake up one day and be like, I'm gonna do a show, part of discovery or anything like that. It was just you know it's in my blood, and um, it's the weirdest thing. The universe keeps calling me, and I just keep saying yes. Um, and that's what's led me to lots of interesting things, including this space right now. Uh, another space that it led me was uh, to the ITU. Anybody familiar with uh, this organization? The International Telecommunications Union is the uh, longest running, oldest uh, non-governmental organization as part of the United Nations. What these guys do is, uh, ever since, oh gosh, I, I forget, like for the last over 100 years, they've been maintaining things like satellite uh, orbits, um, telecommunications infrastructure, interoperability, so that you know Japan can call the United States and vice versa, so that country codes don't overlap. Uh, so that, you know, the calling system and the pairing and, uh, pe oh, not pairing, peering arrangements work and, uh, you know, things of that nature. Uh, and it was a really interesting thing here with this in that uh, in February, or right before February, I got a call. I got a call from one of those really long numbers and I'm like, okay, well, first of all, somebody got my number, which, all right, that's cool. And second of all, they're not from here, so I should answer. And I answer and it's this man, G-Man, um, what's going on? And he's like... I need you to come to Geneva, and I'm like, all right, what's up? And um, you know, I know about Geneva because I used to, um, I used to when I was in like high school, do model United Nations. That's how dorky I am, right? I got to you know play these guys, uh, which is one of my favorite logos because it kind of looks like that one. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, these guys were having a conference in Geneva, following up with the uh, conference in Dubai that happened at the end of 2012 in December, which uh, passed um, the, first, uh, the first updates to uh, international telecommunications uh, you know, trade policies at this conference, uh, WICIT, WCIT, the uh, Worldwide something, something, something. <laughs> anyway, uh, WICIT was kind of uh, huge because suddenly, Internet governance was on the table. Okay, suddenly these 193 nation states 
that are members to the ITU got together to pass the first updates to these international telecommunications regulations that hadn't been updated since 1988. Lots happened since 1988 in the telecommunications world, and suddenly the internet was on the agenda, which I kind of um, feel very strongly about, and to have uh, 193 nations and nations only come to closed door meetings and not allow the uh, you know civil society and the private industry who have built the commercialized in uh, internet even before 1995 when NSF the last backbone fell and it really became what we know now as the internet for them to decide this is how the internet is going to work this is how we're going to standardize on monitoring of citizens I'm not joking this is an ITT documentation you can read on standardizations and packet captures for you know, uh, think people like the NSA to, to trade and stuff. Um, for them to make decisions on how the internet operates, I, I really took issue with, and so I was actually very uh, overwhelmed and, and um, felt like it was a great opportunity to, to actually go to Geneva and take part in the Worldwide Telecommunications Policy Forum to which the internet was again the agenda. And this is continuing. The, and when I say the agenda, the United Nations, the ITU, uh, they see the internet and the governance of the internet not as how do we how do we fit into the internet governance model because mind you internet governance you know we'll get into it in a sec but you know it's it's been working right the question for them is not how do we fit in but how do you guys how are you guys going to report to us better Budding entrepreneurs, startups, and innovators are all turning their ideas into realities, backed by the strength of the .NET domain. Get this, you guys know it, .NETs are globally known. They're one of the most popular domain extensions, and a .NET injects your business with instant credibility. So entrepreneurs and startups will immediately discover the advantages of building their web presence around a .NET domain. So if you already have a .com, well, purchase yourself the corresponding .NET and protect your online brand. And if the .com you want's already taken, we well, don't have to register something 240 characters long. No, get yourself the .NET. It is a perfect alternative, and you can find your perfect .NET domain over at domain.com. I love domain.com because they're affordable. .NETs are only $8.99 a year. They're reliable, they're easy to use. Plus, domain.com's active social media presence on Twitter. Seriously, you can tweet them at domain.com. They make it really just a fun place to do business. So get this, the guys over at domain.com want to hook you guys up with an already awesome offer. I mean, you get 15% off their affordable domain names and web hosting. Get this, all you have to use is the coupon code hack5 at domain.com's checkout. That's 15% off and big time savings. So don't forget to use the coupon code hack5, H-A-K-5, when, uh, when you think domain names. You know what you're gonna think? You're gonna think domain.com. Last week's trivia question was, what Wi-Fi network scanning program was created by Metageek LLC as an alternative to NetStumbler? And the answer was Insider, or in SSID, ER. This week's question is, who is the creator of HackRF, an open source hardware project to build a software-defined radio peripheral? You can answer that over at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack5 goodies.